and uh, take some trips down into Mexico with my, my daughter and son-in-law and grandkids. Uh, had a chance to go down there. Uh, we race up a lot in Canada. I'll tell you what, people in Canada are great. Uh, we've had some wonderful times up there racing at Mission Canada uh, in British Columbia uh, there. And so great drag strip up there, fast drag strip, wonderful fans. So those, those are, that's pretty much my, uh, my out, of, out of country experiences. All right, now let's see what we get out of you for this one. The one I asked Tyler last night: um, if someone gave you eight hundred million dollars to build a brand new drag race track, where where would you even consider building a brand new track, and what kind of features would you want to put into that track? You know, I, I, because I heard that question, I had a chance to think about that a little bit, and what I realize is, I love Woodburn Drag Strip. I love the people there. Um, I would just want to. I, mean, I would love to see that track be, be able. I mean, it's, it, there's just certain things that keep it from being able to hold a national event. Up, up, I, up, I, I mean, upgrade it. This, this is home for me, and so I would want to. I just want to jump on board with them and and uh, just expand the, the operation. And you know the uh, you know like there's there's things that would be so awesome to be able to do the the. I think you guys hit on this last night, but but covering for the the. The grandstands, uh, even I, even for the track itself, because again the rain issue up here. Well, let's just fix that. Let's cover the track. I think that'd be awesome to do something like that. And, and then I think you had some great ideas too of, of the, um, you know, things. You know, really the, you know, taking technology forward to, into making it available for fans, whether you know Wi-Fi options, um, you know, you know having the the replay board, you know, the the monitors and stuff where you could. Uh, you know, replay stuff and, and just do all of that in a better way. And then, uh, you know, having stuff for kids, you know, that was a, that's a brilliant idea. You know, having, having an area for the kids to go to where the parents can, you know, where they could leave safely, leave them there, but then go really enjoy, you know, the experience of, of being on the drag strip. Yep. What do you think about the, the you know, the tracks? What, I forgot what state that's in that track that has a cooling tr- System under the track. That's the what under the track? The cooling system. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I, we we. I tell you, we are paying more and more attention, uh, and I know the pros certainly do, to track conditions, and um, and track temperature is a huge deal. You start getting, uh, you know, uh, what what is a pleasant day for the spectator, where it's you know your fans are out there and they want 80, 90 degree weather so that they can get their tan and enjoy the, 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 all the sights and sounds of drag racing. That's, you know, that track temp all of a sudden is going to be going, you know, with the sun beating down on it, you know, you get one, you know, cars going down it, you, know, you start getting up there in the 130, 140 range and, and those tracks become very greasy and very difficult to get hold of. So anything that can be done to help control track, track temperature and give a more uniform um, conditions for the racer um, would certainly help, but you know that's part of the challenge of all this too is to be able to race in different conditions and and um, you know so you know I would love to have more consistent track conditions because then it allow you to maybe um, you know more consistently run career best and stuff like that. But there's still just the, the the ultimate challenge of adapting to conditions, and so you know I, I'm good with the challenge. All right, so now in A Fuel Racing, do you have a greatest competitor out there? Um, in A Fuel, it, it's going to, well, boy, that's a tough one because there, we, have, we have some really good cars up here. Uh, you know, the in the blown alcohol contingent, you know, we have, you know, what, three, four-time world champ, Joey Severance. So we have Sean Cowley, who's had a tremendous year. But, but when it comes to having someone that you really want to line up and beat, you know, it's going to be my sister-in-law, Kim, and, and Garrett, Garrett Raven, because uh, these are people that are, are, you know, certainly Kim is family, Garrett is like family, and, uh, but man, there's really no one else I'd rather beat, so th- those are those are my rivals right now. All right, now, throughout your uh, c- career, how many trophies have you won? Not near as many as I'd like, <laughs> but I have, I actually have three Wallies uh, from regional races in the uh, alcohol level. Um, and then, um, we'd want to, with the nostalgia top eliminator car, 
uh, Del Patrick had um, that I drove. We won a championship, uh, a series championship up here in the Northwest with that. So we had a couple of race tro- uh, wins and uh, certainly the, the champions trophy. Um, we won a championship in the Double B uh, nostalgia racing that we do uh, with the Double B uh, Funny Car Association up here. And so we won a championship in that, uh, along with a few races. And um, so, and then it's a handful of the match races and stuff. I actually have this really cool, uh, in, when we finished the seventh in the country in 2000, uh, we also won a match race up here that was sponsored by Snap-on Tools. And the trophy was this really cool set of end wrenches in a glass case. But what it was, every one of the wrenches, I don't know if there was like 10 of them or so, Every one of them had the, the different period logo of Snap-on through the years, from clear back to their inception to the most recent one as of 2000. And really cool trophy. I mean, there's just stuff like that that you just you, know, you, you proudly display it because you're, you're really proud of the top. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Now, as far as the sport of drag racing goes, you have any, uh, you know, you have a bucket list of, Anything that you would like to do still? Definitely. Uh, Greg and I share a, a, a passion that we would love to, to win. I'd like to win a national event as a driver if that opportunity pre- uh, presents itself. I would love to have a chance for my son to win a national event, see Tyson in a winner circle with Alcohol Funny Car. Um, and then from a performance standpoint, um, you know, the, the Funny Car would be, you know, I mean, you know there's, some of the runs that have been made are, are just so unattainable, really, for us. I mean, Sean Bellamer holds the record at 535, and Chris Marshall's been 536. And, you know, we don't have we don't have a 540 tune-up yet, uh, let alone anything down like that. So, but, but in the dragster world, um, uh, running a team, um, you know, my sister-in-law's done it, Garrett's done it. Um, I would love to see the A-field car run in the teams. Uh, that, that would be uh, definitely on the bucket list. All right, so Russ, what's your favorite food to eat? Food to eat? Favorite food? Well, uh, you know what? I for years was stuck in it. I was stuck in a rut. If I went to a restaurant, I don't care where it was, I was going to eat shrimp. I love shrimp, uh, but but I I would still say that shrimp is is my all time favorite. I don't care how it's prepared, I'll eat it. All right, what's your favorite beverage? You know that would be. Uh, of uh, the, uh, the, the we, we're fortunate we have so many great little breweries up here uh, Deluxe Brewery in Albany makes some really great great uh, beers that we love and um, uh, they have a, a one called Wild Beaver and you know, here we're in the Beaver State so that's one of my favorites um, so uh, any, any really good oh the other one is, uh, that Garrett turned us on to is uh, there's a, a stout beer that's made by, uh, it's called Eight Ball Stout and that's a, a pretty special beer for us because we we used to have a lot of gatherings as, as racer friends gathering together and, and just sharing a drink together and telling stories. So th- those kinds, it, it's not always what the drink is. It's more about who you're sharing it with. So uh, some great moments with my racer friends up here. So what's your favorite non-alcoholic beverage? Uh, I'm a root beer guy. If, it, if, it, if, it's, if it's, it's either beer or root beer. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I, and, and your root beer. Love root beer. Now, do you have a favorite movie of all time? You know, I, I actually, I, I, uh, I think Tyson kind of answered the same thing where he has, you know, it's like all kinds, you know, all these different, you know, different kind of movies, but, but I, I love, I, I love side gags. And so I'm an, I'm a long time, and the movie Airplane, as corny as it was, had some great moments in it, great lines. I mean, I, I, so I, I, I love the movie Airplane from, from just this, this sheer, stupidity and audacity of everything they did uh but then i like i love i'm a clint eastwood guy too i love clint eastwood grand trino grand trino is definitely one of my my favorites so um any, any anything with with guys like that and clint eastwood um I, i'm really a big fan of his yeah i like the old, old dirty harry movie magnum force all that oh movie. yeah oh yeah go ahead make my day that's right <laughs> the 44 magnum you feel, Absolutely. You feel lucky, punk? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <well>, do you? <laughs> so, you have a favorite music? 
you know, I, it's funny. I, uh, you know, during the, the business day, you know, we just have eighties rock playing in the background, but I actually do have a couple of, uh, um, I, I don't know how I never even really, just recently, there's been a few things, uh, kind of new things for me that, uh, from bands that have been around for a while, but, uh, uh, I've really just recently found out about uh, a guy by the name of Mike Patton of uh, Faith No More, and uh, he back in the day did a song like this, the song Epic. But then he's done some more. He's done such an incredible variety of music, and he he does Burt Bacharach songs and all that. Um, I just for the first time in forever heard the song uh, by Queen uh, called It's Late. Um, I love Clutch. Clutch is a, a great band, uh, and then my mom and I both share a tremendous love for Stevie Ray Vaughan. Um, that guy's just it was phenomenal. Uh, do you got time for a Motley Crue story? Oh yeah. Okay, so so I I have met and talked to Vince Neil uh, because of having raced with Jim Epler on that Chuck Etchell's deal. Uh, that was the year that they uh, Motley Crue came out with the book called The Dirt, and as part of that, they sponsored our Jim Epler driven car at Vegas. So it had. So we had the, the paint, it, was, it wasn't wrapped, it was paint. Had all the different Molly Crew albums all over the car, Girls, 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 and all that. And so, anyway, Vince Neil was there with us at Vegas. And so, we're in the staging lanes uh, at Vegas. Jim's strapped in the car. I was in my usual spot right by, by the front of the car. And Vince Neil walks up. And, and we're standing there, and they do the whole all the pre-race ceremonies. And the cool thing about being by Nellis Air Force Base there is, you know, we get, they, they do a, a low flyby with the uh, fighter jets. It's just, just awesome. A great, great, you know, it's, it's a rah-rah America time. So anyway, so here's Vince Neil next to me. And uh, this is the sum total of my conversation with Vince Neil and Motley Crue. I watch the jets go by and I go, pretty cool, huh? And he said two words to me. F yeah. <laughs> 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 That's the sum total of my conversation with Vince Neil Motley Crew, but it's pretty cool. It's a great memory, and uh, it was fun to have them around um, with us for a few races. Yeah, have you ever read Nikki Six's book, The, Her- the Heroin Diaries? I have not, but I, I will. I will after tonight. I will actually do that. Yeah, that's who you have. Yeah, it's an awesome book. Brilliant. You know, okay, I will definitely do. Talks I'll about. Definitely, I love. I am a reader. Uh, I go in spurts, though. I will, I will not read for a year. Then I'll, if I find a series of books I like, I'll, I'll read all of them in a very short time. It's just uh, I'm a binge reader. Like I'm sure, you, I'm sure you know. Kickstart my heart was about Nikki Six. Oh uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, you were talking about Mike Penn. I remember he had a band called Mr. Bungle, and he was another project oh, called, yeah. called Phantomas. Yeah. I, I, it's like I was just like shocked that I just didn't understand. Um, I didn't know what all he had done and, or what he's done since. And I mean, the guy can do, I think he can do just about any kind of musical style. Uh, I'm really incredible. You got to watch some stuff on him. He, he's amazing. And I don't, have you, I don't know if you've heard the song that, where they do a cover of um, um, This Guy's in, let's see, it's, yeah, it's the Burt Bacharach song, uh, This Guy's in Love With You. I mean, the guy has, it's just, I mean, you just blown away that it's the same guy. And, uh, but yeah, they did. I, I found out that they, they had a big old uh, uh, tip with uh, Chili Peppers back in the day. They, they, would do, they would cover Red Hot Chili Peppers songs, sound just like them, and then, and then imitate their drug use on the stage. And it was like, uh, like no, go figure that they didn't like each other. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So, but but I, I, I'm fascinated with stuff like that. I mean, I'm not a big reality TV show guy, but I, I love to see human drama and how people deal with things like that so yeah i'm kind of a junkie that way all right so now when you were a little kid did did you have a favorite cartoon well gosh we didn't have near as many to choose from back then um but i am i go i am forever going to be a roadrunner wily coyote guy that that's me i i I don't know. I, I feel a lot more like Wiley Coyote. Like I've tried and I've tried and I've tried. They always come up short, uh, but I keep trying. I mean, I, you know, if I had a sponsorship from Acme, I could probably make something happen. But uh, you know, whether it's the Rockets or whatever, 
there was actually a really cool one where they actually, uh, where he had a dragster. And uh, I should go back and try to find that one. I post it on Facebook. But yeah, yeah, Wiley County Roadrunner. That's, that's, that's all time favorite. So how how important do you think it is for uh, kids to come out and watch drag racing at the tracks? I, I think it's huge because I, there's, especially, uh, and I like the way you said that, uh, to come out to the track. I mean, it's one thing to watch it on TV, but TV, like, is, is, is better than nothing, but it, it, you know, like any sporting event, uh, live is better. And if you come out and um, to drag racing and, and see, capture what it's really all about, um, I especially love the junior dragster program um, that my my kids have been a part of. Uh, you know, obviously Tyson, but but then I don't. You know, my daughter Kia uh, had a uh, we she did great in the in her car as well. So we ran the two cars and um, had a great time there. Uh, Isaac and Chris Beesey, uh they're good friends of mine. I worked with Isaac for Chuck Etchells. Uh, worked with him, and anyway, their son Ryan uh, runs a junior dragster uh, here in the Woodburn area that we sponsored for a few years now, and and they've done had tremendous success. There's just it, it, it's a family sport. It's hard to find a sport that can keep an entire family together for years, and that drag racing does that. I mean, you've got the kids that come on whether they have a chance to run junior dragster or whether they're a crew member for mom and dad in their car. Uh, parents come out, grandparents come out, and you can spend a day together. I mean, how hard is that to do anymore, to get a family where they'll actually spend a day together? And, and drag racing is a sport where you can do that, everyone to have a part of it. Now, now I was telling uh, Tyson last night, I was saying I noticed like a lot of live feeds from different tracks, a lot of empty seats these days. I, I don't know what we can do to get more people to come to drag races. You know, the, absolutely right about that and, and that is a, a tough deal because there's so much competing for entertainment dollars out there um, but you know there, there's uh, there's a few tracks out there that really do it right um, you know the Baders and uh, back at Norwalk I mean they, that is a, uh, a model of, of how to fill the seats and, and I don't know that it would work everywhere but but um, you know, there, there's there's people that do it. I think that uh, yeah, Martin, Firebird Raceway, Ma- Martin Martin Michigan does pretty good. Yes, exactly. That's a great example. That's a great example right there. And, and some of it is just um, you know we are actually still very very fortunate up here in the Northwest that we have a lot of good cars still running. We have, uh, and I think some of the tracks have to embrace some of the the different categories that are out there now. I mean. I think that Woodburn's doing a good job of the, the 10.5 and 8.5 outlaw cars and, and building more programs for them. You know, the you know the those of us who've been around longer, you know, we we're always going to be funny car guys and, and uh, you know, blower cars. But you know, these turbo cars are incredible what they'll do. So I, you know, it's like anything, you got to embrace change and, and and change with the times. And and I think that's what tracks got to do is find a way to. To, to make the show better, that it keeps people coming out. And, you know, again, like what you said yeah, last night, again, opportunities for, for be able, people to bring their family, make it affordable, but then give something for all of them to do. And if that means you have a kid a kid play area and, and, and hire the right people that can do that and do it right, uh, those are the things you got to look at. Yeah, like I know there's a, there's a track out in Indiana, 41 over there, they do uh, like a family thing where the whole family gets in for one price. That, that's that's brilliant. I, I love that. It's going to take stuff like that, and uh, and I you know I know NHRA is is working hard to uh, to you know continue to you know, keep parity in the classes and keep people involved. But you know the you know the, the alcohol racing that we do. I mean we're you know it's we it's, it's hard to find find the funds to, to keep that going. And and you know I don't know that that really you know the, at the, the big show level. Know, slowing them down is you know, is that a good thing or a bad thing? I miss I personally miss quarter mile drag racing. I understand why they're running a thousand foot, but I personally, you know, I'm I feel very fortunate that we get to still go a quarter mile. But you know, those are all things you got to look at. Is there an opportunity to create a uh, to, to bring those cars speeds down to make it and also make keep it more affordable without it killing the show? I mean, those are all things you, you just got to be willing to to look at it and. But, you know, it's so hard to, you know, getting the racers to agree on rules and, and 
get the sanctioning body to agree to that as well. It's like herding cats. It's really difficult. Take the, take the right person, right leadership to do it. Now, well, one thing I think is really cool is that the event, the event that uh, Chris Graves does, the Funny Car Chaos. Oh yes, yes, yeah. That's that's growing growing rapidly. It's, you know, he's got more and more tracks this year than he had last year. It's just going to keep growing. Yep. We've actually, just in the last, uh, we have a, one thing that Woodburn's done really well uh, for the last few years is, you know, for a long time, it, it's not a track that would run at night. And I think night drag racing is, is awesome. It's just spectacular. And so we've been having a race in July, uh, Night of Fire, for a uh, number of years now. And they in the past, they would bring in portable lights. Now they put in a light tower, and it's getting where, you know, it's just a it's a huge event for them. And um, you know, uh, earlier we were talking about uh, Dennis and Justin Taylor. You know, they have a nostalgia nitro funny car, and they actually uh, mash race with a jet car. And, and it's not the first time that's ever been done. But but the way they coordinated it with uh, the jet car doing its uh, the afterburner pops and Justin doing its burnout, and then a side by side race, and the cars ran well. Um, I mean, I was, you know, here I am a, a participant in the sport and, and sometimes you get so too busy to, to actually even go watch any other car run. And, but I made sure I was up there to see that and it was a tremendous show. And so it's just going to take stuff like that. You know, it, it, if, if you do something unique, if you do something special, uh, and, and do it like that, you know, you're going to start putting people back in the seat. Yeah. Like you were, you were saying about, uh, do a night race with yeah, like especially like say you're 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 a dragster, you know, people want to see that header flame at night time. Mm hmm Absolutely. Yeah. And I tell you that that's that's one thing I uh, with the dragster and the motor behind me, uh someday, someday and Greg and I have talked about this, someday we'd love to do a fuel altered and, and just be able to see, you know, the header flames, you know, um, uh, we got uh the, the Hicks family up here uh, in the Northwest, both uh, Dan and, and Dave Hicks, both have uh, nitro alters and have done well and, and put on great shows. And the Owens family with theirs. And we, we, we have some really good nitro cars up here that just put on a great show. But I would love to drive one of those and have that, that uh, the header flames where you see them out in front of you. And, um, you know, current alcohol funny car champ, Sean Bellamer, good friend. And he used to uh, drive the high speed. Uh, motorsports top fuel car that Mindy Fry drives now. And uh, I remember him telling me stories of just driving through a wall of fire. You know, this is what it's like. I mean, you just have a tunnel of fire. You know, you just, there's just something about nitro methane. I mean, I love the alcohol funny car. They're a huge challenge, but, but nitro is just flat out cool. It's just bad. Bad in a great way. Yeah, you mentioned Dan Hicks. I had Dan Hicks on for an interview with the Heat Seeker. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yep. Yep, great guy, real good racer, puts on a great show, got a really good running car. And I've no, I've no use. I know you've seen videos of Tom Ochi's car, the Jurassic Plastic, with them huge header flames. Oh yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just. I mean, that's just. That's just. Where else you go to see that? And, and I'm telling you, that's that's where getting people out to see that live because it's just awesome. And like the two funny cars, uh, John Lawson's two funny cars. Yeah, boy, he had a, he had, when was that, that was last year or so where he had the, didn't he have a throttle hang up and a burnout? And, yeah. And had a, yep. yeah, that was a wild ride. That was a wild ride. And uh, glad to see him come out of that okay. But yeah, I mean, they, they just, and see, that's, they do a, you know, they put on a great show. I, I don't think, running them like they do, I don't think they really heard a lot of stuff. Um, and, you know, that there's, there's something to be said for all of that. Make it more affordable. Um, for the racer, uh, for the spectator alike, and and then find a way to, to get more people to see. Yep. Well, I think I've, I think I've covered everything, so I think we're good. So, uh, yeah, I want to thank you very much for uh, taking time to do an interview with me, Russ. Oh, absolutely, it's been a pleasure. Uh, thank you for having Tyson on yesterday and, and, and me today, and now you can go after. Um, my uh, my uh, sister in law and my brother maybe and uh, we can just make it a whole family affair. That's what, how we like to do it up here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sure will. So, you have any uh, final words or thank yous? Anything closing? Oh, so, so again, just thank you, 
my family for, for allowing me to do something I really, really love to do. Um, it, it's just been a, a, a great ride. And, and, you know, Robbie and Greg and, and my guys in the A-Field car, uh, on my, my dragster side of things, again, uh, Barry and Chris Jurgensen and, and, uh, and uh, Roy and Glenn Collison and Scott Gibson, Brittany, all, y'all, y'all have been just tremendous. Uh, I couldn't do all this without you guys and each and every one of you. I just so appreciate you. My mom and dad gave me a chance to do this, getting us started in it and the support of my brother. And, and uh, yeah, we, 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 it's, this is, the family is not just uh, the, the flesh and blood part of it, but we have been all the, all the racer friends. It's just been a great ride and I'm going to keep on doing it as long, absolutely as long as I can. Awesome. Well, Russ, I wish you the best of luck with the rest of the season. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We'll be on, hopefully you will have me on again one of these days. Yeah, I was just going to say we'll do another one in the future and get an update on how, what's going on with you. Sounds great. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate you, it. You have a great night, Russ. Uh, you too. Bye-bye.